So now we are at round 11. We got Tier versus Infernoble Mikanko. Both players are X2. Whoever loses this for sure does not top. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in OBS, you can do a screen capture, crop the DB match, and you can have it in the corner of the YCS live stream. I can do a screen capture, crop the DB match. Hold on. Wait! Ha ha! Ugh. Ah, 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 ah. I'm crazy. I'm crazy. I'm crazy. I'm crazy. I'm crazy. I'm crazy. I won that game. I won that game. I won that game. Y'all see that? You see that? I don't, ca I don't care about no new war. I'm insane. Okay, so... They went wanted posters, search for Black Witch, oh, high me effect, go ahead, grab out the ritual spell, and now they discard. Simon, he's a very good player. Uh, now they're going to go ahead and discard. Also, shout to his sponsor, Cardboard Concierge, also one of my sponsors. Great, great place. Shout out to them. I'm actually friends with the co-owner, but uh, use screen, or use capture screen. Easy clap. Yeah, that was free. That was free. <laughs> A little at the flu nest. Oh, hi, me. No, it isn't, but okay. Gosh, I'm actually so happy I won that game. I, I did misplay, though, because I could have kept unexplored wins, and that would have made that ten times easier, because I could have outed their whole board there, like, actually out everything. Neither of them top, top 32. A whole handful of top X2s will top. But all of them will have lost last round. Um, I don't know exactly because I didn't use like the app for it to see who or exactly how many people top. But I'm fairly certain it should be a high percentage of X2s. It shouldn't be a low percentage of X2s. It, sh it shouldn't be a handful. It should be a basket full. Like, there's going to be a lot. There's going to be a lot. Then, because I know at Indy it was like, like the math before was like 65% of X2s don't top. And then, yeah. So why are they showing this cheater? That's actually crazy that you bring that up because Simon He was confirmed not a cheater. The person that called Simon He a cheater and got him banned actually made a Facebook post about a year ago talking about how he lied about it and how he did it just for clout and how, yeah. That's pretty much it. Yep. <laughs> the guy was like, yeah, I lied. I don't play Yu-Gi-Oh anymore. I just figured enough time has passed to let you all know. Uh, I lied about him being a cheater. I got him banned. My bad. That's it. Yep. <laughs> Which is crazy, right? That's crazy. Because, like, everybody called Simon he a cheater for so long, and then that guy came out and was just like, yep, I lied about it. <laughs> That's actually messed up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100% messed up. 100% messed up. Only did it to Simon He because he was a good player. And, yep, that's it. The guy literally took his own fingernails, pointed into his cards, made onto his sleeves, and then said the opponent was stacking. Gosh, so messed up. But why were other people saying his finger marked their cards? Uh, I don't know, they probably just lied. And bandwagon and joined on into it. That's probably it, to be honest. Like, yeah, wouldn't surprise me. I mean, the the guy who said that he cheated against him said that he didn't cheat against him and he lied about it. So I, I you know, I would say it's safe to say that he's not a cheater. I don't know. I mean. I don't know. That's crazy. I remember this man losing his sponsors and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And he got banned from the game for years. Really messed up, to be honest. Like, if that ever happens to me, I'm going to be so salty. There's two warriors. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, they... Ah, the judge didn't know. Kashira Rice are only XYZ locks you if you use the special summon effect, not the banish effect. Said, but he's old now. I remember when I was I was 10 when this happened. Yeah, it was it was before my time. I don't I don't remember when that happened. I just remember afterwards people talked about it. Said yo yo, do you have the breakdown? Nope. Nope. So a sold search Oliver. 
Okay. So they're actually playing Oliver in their deck. I know it says Infernoble Sinful Spoils make Anko, but... Last time it said that, we didn't see any Infernoble. So now, a soul's gonna go ahead and dump. Yup. It's fair. I would also reread over every single Meganko card that was put out on the onto the field. Every single one. Every single one. Even though I know pretty much what every single one of them does, you know, there's always going to be that extra little effect hidden on one. Or something. Or something that you didn't catch before. Something random. Some new interaction that you just thought of because you haven't seen their deck enough. Uh, I'm sorry, but once a cheater, always a cheater. They they didn't cheat. That's the thing. They got falsely accused. If that's the case, then am I a cheater? Because I've been falsely accused of cheating. But, like, it didn't happen. Like, am I a cheater? I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't think that's a good way to think about it. Falsely accusing of cheating is, is kind of trashy. But it does happen. It's actually so crazy the person that falsely accused me of cheating because everything that they accused me of is literally what they did in our match. And I was like, there's no shot. Or they were mad because I had to read their cards in the match. They were like, oh, dude, they had to ask what my card's name was like four times to look it up online. And I was like, yeah, dude, I've never seen these cards because they were hitting me with some like 2007 wild cards and i was like i don't i don't know what these wild techs are i didn't play during this time but that was speed duel so i was really getting hit with some crazy cards no nah, i don't think you're a cheater but i just remember at the time he was laughing about it yeah well i mean what else can you really do right you get called out as a cheater you get banned you tell everyone you're not a cheater no one believes you i mean there's nothing to do but like laugh about it right and just be like oh that's unfortunate Oh, had the talents there. Oh, uh, uh, it's definitely not planet. I'm letting them have two planet. That's only one card right there. Not hitting Mally. Uh, I, it's Rhino or card destruction. It feels like it's definitely Rhino or card destruction. I'm almost certain about it, but there is a world where it could be Mally, but it would be a super weird world. Yeah, I was going to say, the hand would have to be so specific, because you could hit Mally out of hand, and that makes it to where they don't have a Tribute Summon over Acid Golem, because you just rip the level 6 out of their hand. So that's why I'm thinking there is a world where it could be Mally, but it would be a weird world. It would not feel correct at all. D designator type cards. God, I hate Jen and Ken so much. I it's so broken, so broken. But honestly, Simon He's deck is so cool here. We're seeing the Celine, the Magician Soul. They're having to put counters up on the cards. Yeah, use the effect of summon back. It's so dumb that they like the new way to use dice is you have to have one dice for each counter. Like summon Celine, like like mid game in a grind game it's like yeah hold on and you literally have to grab like a whole thing of dice and you're like yeah let, let me just slap this on real quick also those dice just like the deck box got them all the way back in 2014 still rocking with them to this day they're crazy they're crazy infernoble kind of crazy right now infernoble is nice a hundred percent 100% Infernoble is nice. I think it's going to be a little bit less nice after this weekend, though, because people gave the deck little to no respect up until, like, now. Pretty much. Up until now. It literally, all it was before was, I'm going to have Droll in my side deck, and this is what I have for Infernoble. Oh, that also looks like a, a Duelist League Rota. But they're going to go Thrust in the Rota, Rota in the Renaud. That's fine. That's good. I love how there's just so much random stuff going on. Like, we have a Selene, a Black Witch, Jen and Ken. We talents them. We have Meganko stuff going on in our hand, too. Like, decks like this are cool. And it's also wild that a deck like this won a YCS. And I'm salty that that YCS was not streamed. Because, my God, I would have loved to have seen the gameplay on how that, like, played out. With Meganko winning the YCS. 
uh, in time, that could come in handy. How to beat Infernoble. They play through every hand trap other than Jarol. Uh, well, I mean, you just have to... I mean, I would just learn how to hand trap correctly. That's really it, I guess. Just learn how to hand trap correctly. I don't think they play through every single hand trap every single time. And then... I mean, they're a big combo deck. They're going to play through, like, one Ash every time, right? Like, I'm not expecting to stop big combo with a low impact. Um, even a high impact, usually you would want a high impact plus a low impact. Or if the combo deck is really, really, really good, then you'd, you would need an extremely high impact card, like back tier, and like back in tier format with Shifter. Would you invest in a Vanquish Soul Core right now? Uh, probably not. Probably not. I don't think the deck's like too good. And it's got to start getting, uh, I mean, the deck came out, what, like, five months ago? So I guess it's not going to get reprinted yet. I'm not sure, though. It's like a weird set, too, because that was like a side set, not a main set, right? I don't know, it's kind of tricky. I wouldn't invest into it. But I'm also cheap. They're going to go make Anko Ohaimi effect to equip the Arabisk. Not sure what they're equipping it to, but they're going to equip it to something... Um, maybe the opponent's monster, but then that could hurt their Geo play. Okay, so we're going to equip it to our monster. And then activate, go summon, and bounce back to hand, which gives us follow-up. And then, oh, also, I think I saw the Herald of the Abyss in their main deck. That would help out a lot. And then that's now going to equip to that. And now they're going to get that effect to go search for Fire Dance, because that can go search for any Mikanko equip spell whenever it is equipped. I'm hyped for the new Aroma cards. I haven't seen them yet. I haven't seen them yet. Do they come out in that February set? Or do they come out sooner? Also, shout out to the Bake Shop for the follow. Thank you. And then... Summon Renaud. Renaud effect to add back. And then maybe this is where they normally get to go for, like... The... Herald of Arc Light, but it kind of seems like a lot of this, some of this has been a freestyle. This isn't like a normal combo. This is this is taking a lot of cards in our hand because like we had the thrust for Rhoda and Terena. This definitely isn't a regular combo. Um, but now they're gonna link off the I think it's the Hyru or whatever the the fire the fire and Celine go up in the Geo. Okay, that's fine. And then from here, they will go, yeah, they have Trap in hand, um, they have Fire Dance as an extender, summon back out the level 3, 2 level 3s, that looks like Acid Golem to me, and then Acid Golem pass over to the opponent's field, overlay, this is also a really long turn 1, he added Renon with the Soul Cheater, he, he didn't add Renon with a sword. He added Renon with Rota. <laughs> he added Fire Flint Lady with a sword, which is still in the hand currently. Um, they're going to go Geo Effect, pass Acid Golem over to the opponent. Yep, making it so that way the opponent cannot special summon anymore. That's pretty good. They admit defeat? You have Mali in hand. You have a Tribute Summon. You have a tribute summon. What are you doing? No, this is why people need. This is why people need testing versus the fake decks. You would have realized there's an out. It's a tribute summon. And it comes up because now game two, game three, you're not going to think about it. You're not going to side in your bestials. And you could have sided in your bestial magma mutt and search your druist worm. And then tribute summon over acid golem. But, okay. Oh, also, let me update the, uh, the stream title. I forgot to do that. It's round 11 currently. The last round of Swiss. And Simon He has won game one over Tyler. Also, yeah. I didn't do predictions for this one. Um, but we will do it for top 32. We'll do it for top 32. People just be saying words. Said paid actor. Oh, I thought it was just the other way around. Jake from State Farm, Acid Golem. 
Uh, that has nothing to do with the testing, to be honest. You're just kind of dumb if you have Nally in hand and don't tribute summon. Um, well, what do you mean that has nothing to do with testing, to be honest? That, if you tested and you played the matchup, you would know how to out it. I think that has everything to do with testing. <laughs> I think that has everything to do with testing. If you test, you know how to out it, you would know everything you can possibly do to beat it, and then you would try to see what you have to beat it, you would look, and you'd see you have one of the cards, and you'd know you can draw for turn and out it. Um, so, I think if they tested, they would have seen the line there, but they obviously did not test the McEnko matchup, which... You know, I doubt most people tested for Mikanko for this event. If I went to this YCS, oh my god. I, I literally, if I went to this YCS, I would have spent like five hours playing Mikanko myself. And I would have like played the deck and tried to learn it more. Or maybe hit up somebody that knows how to play it very well, play against them. I feel like uh, this is definitely a deck I would have been prepared for. Because it's like actually a pretty decent deck. And if you don't know what it does, that's when it has, like, a huge advantage over you. Uh, Meganko could do some serious damage right now if it's played right. True, yeah, if it's played right, and then especially if it's playing against players who don't know what it's doing. Like, even if you play against players who knows what it's doing, it can still be dangerous. It's still a Gen Ken Talents Thrust deck. Like, it's still one of the scary decks. Um, and it has Lava Golem in it. Its engine's good at going second. It has a sold in it. An acid golem locks you. It's a scary deck. Very scary. I don't want to play against it. I definitely don't. Um, that's just not testing tier enough in general. Mali is also an Ibli out. Yeah. And I also think that if Ibli was on their field and they did tons of testing versus a rescue ace opponent who played Ibli, I bet you they would also see that out. I think... I think testing would solve both of those problems, to be honest. Yeah, they're pile shuffling their deck. For some reason, the judge said something when they started pile shuffling, but you for sure can pile shuffle your opponent's deck. It's like a very, I wouldn't say it's a very common thing, but it, it, it's like common enough. Like maybe like once every other event, my opponent, I'll have one opponent pile shuffle my deck. Uh, it's fun. My favorite floodgate is Cactus Bouncer for plants. Cactus Bouncer is a f is a cool floodgate. I like that card. That card's cool. But I don't like floodgates. And that card. Oh, he's he said you gonna take a picture? Okay, all right. Blah, 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 blah. Um, I forget what I was saying exactly. Oh, the Cactus Bouncer. Yeah, that card's cool. I like how it looks too in Secret Rare. But okay, going on to game number two now. We are going to see Tier Limit decide to go first. They do open. It looked like Card Destruction plus Kelbeck plus Field Spell. They're going to go Field Spell, go Search. Do we see a Droll and Resolution? That would be huge if they had a Droll and Resolution. But they said Thumbs Up, nothing on Res. Ah, uh, that's tough. Cactus Bouncer was fake for like 10 years. It's cool. It's finally playable nowadays. Yeah, I mean, it's not, it's play, it's definitely playable. It's not the optimal way to go with plants, but it's cool that if you want to, you, I mean, to be honest, nowadays, if you want to do anything, you can make your deck do it. And I think that's cool, but they have Kelbeck, Murley, Solik. Mm, I think they activate Murley. I think they'll do like Murley 1, Solik 2, Kelbeck 3 or something like that. Or not like that. Uh, Murley 1, Kelbeck 2, Solik 3. I mean, ah, wait, no. Ah, uh, that's tough. I was going to say, you want to search second, but you don't want to get hit with Ash on Kelbeck. But I guess like, Mikanko doesn't really play Ash. Do they? Maybe they side deck it against, like, super slow basic decks. But I feel like I haven't seen a main deck in it or anything. Uh, they mill five. Okay. And then they're going to go ahead, put back with the Murley. The Murley plus the Glory. Because that can go up in the Mud Dragon. Uh, Shaylin discard Kelbeck. Horus tier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have Horus cards in the deck. 
But to be honest, it's still just a tier deck. Like, they didn't draw any of the Horus cards, so they don't do anything in this game. They're just, like, random mills. Uh, okay, yeah, they asked what they searched off Solik. They showed Tear Cash. Uh, they want a normal Rhino. They could go Rhino dump Tear Cash to mill two. Because it doesn't look like they actually want a fusion here. Oh? What do they have in Grave? Oh, I guess they have Nessie, right? So that's, uh, Garua. Okay. That's fair. Um, probably should have let them cut first. Yeah. Probably should have let them cut first. Yep, it's just those two. Because Rhino. And then they get to make, uh, Garua. And then they can go Bahamut Shark. And then Bahamut Shark and the Toad. Okay. Uh, they still have card destruction in hand. The card's not as good now as it would have been, like, you know, at the beginning of a turn, maybe. But it's fine. It's fine. Card destruction can also, like, unbrick, which is, like, a great thing. If you have that plus tons of bricks in your hand, that's, like, a broken hand, as long as it goes through. But Bahamut Shark can go in the Toad now. Um, something that the tier player does have to start thinking about is time. You know, I don't think we should start playing at such a fast pace that we start misplaying, but I do think we should think in our head that we do need to make the pace a little bit faster because Simon is able to go second here and spend a lot of time trying to break the board. And if you're going to spend a lot of time still trying to make the board, then when we go into game three, there's not a whole lot of time left and Simon's going first. And that, the deck has to have a way to win in time. It has to, obviously. It does so many different things. It does a soul. If it's, if it summons a soul, it has to have a way to win in time. Like, guaranteed. Um, they're going to go tier cash, banish, special, effect of mill three. That's probably what, like, Tyler's thinking. Because, like, you know, they probably don't know the deck. They probably don't know, like, what time cards they would have. So you can just assume, like, they probably have something to win in time. They mill nothing there. They mill tier cash. Well, they do They do get something off that. Oh, my gosh. Tier cash mill scream Mally. My gosh. Oh, it's actually so dirty. Um, They're going to go search Solik. They also could have summoned Bahamut Shark up in the extra monster zone. It's like no more normal. Uh, I don't know if they play Destrudo, but if they milled Destrudo there because of their zone placements, they would have had to play a little bit more awkwardly to achieve their Baron. Okay, but they're going to link off into a Cross Sheep. They also summon Garua. In that zone, instead of over in Toad Zone, which was open and free. Yeah, the tier player's fumbling, I'm not gonna lie. They're making a decent amount of misplays now. They're gonna bring out SP, SP effect on summon to go banish. And then, uh, I just banish the McInko, if I banish any of those. Yeah. The zone placement is so bad if he plays Cross Sheep, yeah. You know, I, I was kind of just assuming they didn't play Cross Sheep, but they were summoning down in that column. It's crazy, because they're still, they're still used to, like, Kikalis columns with 2 and 4. But now it's 1, 3, 5, because we play Cross Sheep. Yeah. Crazy how big the difference is. Kikalis used to be 2, 4. Cross Sheep is 1, 3, 5. It's literally just the opposite. Because, like, with Kikalis, you'd always want to, like, Summon your bodies here so you can tag out elsewhere. You just need to have your zone set up properly. Uh, can tier limit out Huli lock outside goddess? Um, can they out it? No targeting? I don't think so, no. I'm pretty sure my tier buddy who played the deck before said that there was no out to it. This is a while ago. This was also like two months ago. Um, so I don't, I don't know. And that's also a little bit different version. I guess, uh, they do play Horus cards. Horus cards can out it. Oh, they mill Jet Synchro on there. That's good for them. Mekanko Wind. Uh, the opponent still has card destruction, but they're not gonna use it. Uh, they might actually set Solik and then do it. 
Just to get Shuffler in Graveyard, really? None. But you do give the opponent a new hand. But you could also attempt to make the opponent draw into, like, uh, hand traps here. Because, you, you know, you full combo, you card destruction, make them draw in the hand traps. So, activate it. And then Simon's thinking. Oh, is he going to scoop? Oh, no, no, no. Okay, okay, okay. I was going to say, it looked like he put the hand over the deck like the scooping motion. But, nope. Okay, so just card the hand. Draw a new one. Honestly, this isn't, like, too, 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 too bad for Simon, though. I don't know what they draw, but they, they have a bunch of graveyard resources, so... At least they're getting something. Oh, and the opponent didn't set Solik before using card destruction. That is, um... Oh, oh, did they try to declare the graveyard effect of it? I think they did, because the judge is giving them a warning right now. Oh, okay, so, yeah, they messed up. They could have set Solik. They just decided to not have a trap card for their Shailen. Um Activate Terraforming now, go search. They're going to read Denier really quick. Uh, yep, Denier can summon, put back Mali, but they have the other Mali stuck under Beatrice right now. So that's not going to be that great. Can't activate Terraforming because they don't have a field spell in deck. That's back-to-back -back warnings. But literally back-to-back -back play warning into a warning. My gosh. And then pass turn. Hey, and, and, and when, people, when people are like, yo, why don't you ever go on feature match? Like, hey, that's one reason. You know what I mean? You can start fumbling bad. You start getting warnings back to back like that. Like, all I'm saying is in a regular match of Yu-Gi-Oh! at a YCS, if I activate Terraforming with no field spells in deck, the only thing that's going to happen is I pick up my deck, I go, oh, that's my bad, I apologize, and then I put Terraforming back in hand, no warnings, that's it. But you're on a feature match? Oh, guess what? Now, now they're giving out a warning because it's on feature match. And because, like, judges are constantly watching, but okay. Um, yeah, Simon gets to draw for turn here. Alright, so we are going up against Shuffler, Planet, Scream, Beatrice, Toad, SP. Pretty sure there, there might be another Shuffler, actually. There might be another Shuffler, actually. I think we milled Medora early on in the combo. Uh, Summon breaks this board, to be honest. Maybe, maybe. That Solik was three interruptions, now gone. Yeah, well, uh, let's say it, let's say it was like two. I'd say it's two, because playing it's going to happen anyways. But I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Like, it's for sure a fumble right there. Like, there was, there was almost no card you could have drawn that would have done more value than what that Solik would have done there for them. So that, that was obviously not good. Oh, Lava Golem. Okay, so if they did have Solik, it wouldn't have mattered. No, it would have, because it still would have been live, because there's Toad. Toad effect add back. So, Toad's going to add back Tear Cash. That's fine. Reading over Toad real quick. It's whenever it's sent to Graveyard. Even extra deck to Graveyard. Yep, you ever get hit with, like, a Maximus or something, and then you just send, like, Toad, Toad, and you're like, okay, Toad, Toad, put back, put back. It's crazy that he could have gotten Solik back after misplaying and didn't do it. Um, how? I don't, I don't see how they're, because they already used Beatrice effect. Yeah, I don't think they had anything. He has Trivi Karma in hand. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. I see what you mean. Okay. Because they haven't used the Planet Pop that turn. So shuffle back Solik, Planet Pop it. With Shyama and a Shuffler Engrave. Oh my gosh. That's so tough. Change of Heart, take Shaylin. I mean, it's deserved, right? It's deserved. They make misplays. And you get punished for it. If they lose this game, it'll probably be off the back of their misplays. But Change of Heart takes Shaylin. They're trying to save Battle Phase here. They could activate Tear Cash, which then allows you to activate Scream, which then makes their Shaylin lose 500, which then makes it under the attack of SP Little Knight. So, 
They're going to go ahead, summon tier cash. One, two. Mill, mill. Yeah, because we definitely want to use Scream here. That's why we summoned the. So, Scream one, tier cash two. Mill Rhino, Heartbeat, Foolish, Mill three more. Mill Murley, Sarcophagus, Mothman. I would say that's a good set of mills. We got a tier name. We get to add back a purple card from our graveyard, which also means uh, if we can activate Rhino Heart here, that'll be insane because we will get to add back Solik and then instantly discard it. Um, but we're going to add Solik back with Heartbeat and then resolve Murley. Okay. Um... Okay, go up in the Dragos to Paleo. I was going to say... Nah. Ah, yeah, okay, okay. Go in the Dragos to Paleo. We can Planet Pop the Shaylin if we want to. Because that'll allow us to activate the effect. That's why I was also thinking about... We could go for Kaleido Heart. Planet Pop Shaylin. And then Shaylin Effect... Can't make anything good though. It'd make Dragos to Paleo next to it. That's the same as doing it this way, pretty much. Um, yeah, you just do it that way, anyways. Obviously, this way is better. Um, with the Dragos to Paleo first, then the Kaleido, since Kaleido doesn't actually do anything. Um, yeah, but maybe it's worth just not using Planet Pop at all. Hold Planet Pop downsides of that we don't get a free kaleido heart off of it since they'll probably link away shaylin upside to it though we get to hold the pop which makes our board like infinitely harder to play through because uh, like a talent here would be insane right like a talent's take that just like continues to beat over the board you just go like dragos to paleo beat over sp but special Fenrir, declare the effect. The opponent changed Dragos to Paleo on it. Sure, we could go battle phase to force SP. Well, force SP meaning just outing SP. Uh, he has Trivi Karma in hand. Uh, they have Solik in hand. Don't remember the last card. I don't know if we know the last card. I'm pretty sure it was a card destruction draw. Right, that's what Trivi Karma was too. But Snake Eyes, send Fenrir, bring out Renaud. Renaud effect to add back. That's also just excellent value out of Fenrir. I feel like that card almost always trades well. But they're going to chain Keldo in response to them targeting it. Um, and then they're going to go ahead and put back. Yep. So put back wanted poster which stops a draw. Put back the Erebus that they're trying to add back right now. And then put back Jet Synchron. It's kind of crazy how, like, even after putting back those three cards, there's still, like, so... There's still a few graveyard effects that are still good in there. Or a few cards that are good engraved in there. Like, the Ceremony, the Wind, uh, the Snake Eye's still good in Graveyard, just not this turn. Can't even see the whole Graveyard. Oh, hey, thank you, thank you. Thank you, appreciate you. Is that Museum? That is Museum, isn't it? I guess they are playing the Infernoble build of it. Museum's a broken card. Checks out. This deck seems so fun, though. Playing, like, almost no hand traps. Just, like, trying to engine break through boards. Playing very skillfully. And... It's gonna be tough, because... Um... Yeah, it's gonna be tough. Also, I... The, the chat... For Konami's actual stream, I swear they're so dumb sometimes. This person said, he should just scoop. Or no, 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 never mind, never mind, I read it wrong. They said, should he scoop? No, no, they should not scoop here. Nope. There is, uh, there's 11 minutes left currently, and Mekenko needs to just keep taking a good amount of time. Even if they don't end up winning this game, it doesn't matter, because if we can take enough time while still committing to plays and then when we go to game three we win in time and our opponent's deck plays very little hand traps so nice is it 12 rounds today uh it's 11 rounds of swiss and then in the top 32 um thank god this isn't eu whenever jess is on i don't even know what that means uh simon should get a slow play warning i don't 
I don't think he played that slow there. To be fair, also the opponent had to like start reading. But it looks like they are getting a slow play warning right here for that play. Uh, yeah, they're maybe asking about the slow play warning. Okay, it looks like they're still getting it. Maybe they're arguing it. I'm going to be honest, like, appealing a slow play warning is, like, almost pointless because the head judge is just going to ask the floor judge, hey, did they slow play? And it's like, yep. It's like, okay, cool. Yep. That's almost, I feel like that's almost always how it would go, like, that conversation. And then they're going to go ceremony, banish, go dump. Huh? Does ceremony add? No, ceremony dumps. Yeah, ceremony dumps. I'm not being lied to right now. I know ceremony dumps. That card doesn't add. Because that card, usually that's what you would do with it. Oh, 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 oh. They had activated Ohaimi effect in the hand. Okay, okay. My bad, my bad. Yep, they had activated Ohaimi to go search and then discard trap. Okay, that checks out then. Uh, how much interaction has the Infernoble Mekinko player went through so far? Uh, Planet Pop, Dragos to Paleo effect, Mill 6, a Shuffler, Toad. I don't remember what else was on the field, but I know we tributed over it with Lava Golem. There was another boss monster on the field at some point. They're gonna go SP to banish Lava Golem plus Renaud until the end phase. Okay. That's interesting. Banish the Lava Golem. Okay. Ha, they took the play card with them. I guess they could have banished one of their tier cards. Make it so that way next turn there's a tier guaranteed. And now the tier player takes 35 here off that attack. Since they're taking whatever the Kaleido is at. Which is 35. Uh, so just Kaleido Heart and SP left, yeah. Uh, Kaleido Heart probably won't be an interruption. Since... Yeah, I was gonna say, it probably won't be an interruption, but they just passed. The McGinko taking a while to make plays. They know they don't win this game. They know they probably don't win this game. But honestly, wait, 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 wait. Will they even be able to out... This McEnko monster, though, do they play what it takes? Um, I think that was Zombie Vampire in their extra deck. How do they out the McEnko card? I don't know. I actually don't know. I don't know how they do it. Uh, I'm trying to think, because I was told before that there was no out. So maybe it's, like, just non-engine. Like, better have non-engine. They can Zeus. True, there is another... There's that. You could Zeus, but that is not very good because of how much time's left, but that is an out. That is an out. That's at least something. Shyama, Pop, Kaleido, Kaleido effect, summon, go dump. Do they, do they even have a rank to make Zeus? Um. Well, with how they're playing it, no. Actually, yeah, they do. They could overlay Lava Golem and Dragos to Paleo to make um, Zombie Vampire. They're going to Kaleido Heart, spin back the Renaud because it was specialed. Like, the Kaleido Heart was specialed. And then they're reading Shyama. Shyama is an out, also. Shyama's an out. I was actually talking about that yesterday for Unchain outs. Because um, they can pop back row without targeting it. So they're going to pop Trivi Karma, pop their back row. Yep, does not target. They don't know that. No, they do. Can the McEnko not be targeted? Yep, the McEnko wind makes it so that way uh, none of the stuff would be able to be targeted. And then any damage that you would take, the opponent would take instead. So you're not able to target it or like beat it by battle. But there's only like five minutes left. And... You know, now we're going into game three. Uh, looking very good for the McEnko player here. 
um, able to just try to win in time. To be honest, anything that isn't like a, a playable card on their main phase one probably should not be a card on their deck right now, to be honest. Like, yeah, anything that's not playable on their main phase should not be in a said Unchained can pop it easily. Oh, yeah, 100%. Yep. But I was asked about, like, how Unchained can out it yesterday, because I'm pretty sure we had a, a feature match of Unchained versus McInko, and I was just talking about, like, all the different ways that they can, like, pop Cardboard Constarage, Lil. Nah, shout out to Cardboard Constarage. They're, they're, they're one of my sponsors. Nah, they're, they're cool. They're cool. I'm friends with, like, one of the co-owners. Bring out all the time cards. Uh, wait, how did Tyler win? Didn't Simon have that? No, oh, Simon Simon wasn't even close to having that. There there was a lot of interruptions there. Like, infinite amount of interruptions. No, Simon, Simon wasn't close there. It's, like, kind of close, but... Do you think Infernables is in top five of the format? I don't really do, like, top fives normally, I feel like. Um... But I would say it is a good deck. It's probably up there. Yeah, I would say it's top five. Uh, kind of an ironic deck that consists of fire warriors has no burn effects. Uh, now nah, this this deck can burn for sure. This deck can burn for sure. There's got to be something. I mean, I know Infernoble can burn for sure. Said no ways Infernoble top five, and I love that deck. Oh no, you sound crazy. Infernoble is not bad. Like. Ugh, I so it's also please tell me that you're not one of the Infernoble players that doesn't play the Diabellister stuff, because ever since I started posting the Diabellister stuff with Infernoble, a lot of the OG Infernoble players are like, bro, this is cheeks, dog. This is not good. This is horrible, and it's like, what do you mean? That's that's why the deck is like better now. Is because it has that stuff. It got the SP. It got Angelico Ring. It got a bunch of support in the last set. Like an infinite amount. Infernoble is crazy, but I don't know if it's top five. Do they get time extension for the slow play warning? Doesn't look like it, no. Looks like they're still sitting at two minutes and 40 seconds. And then, alright, good luck going into game three. Um, also, yeah, tournament results show Sinful Spoils version is better. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't always listen to tournament results. Not always. It doesn't always mean something's better than the other. It just means like it's played more. But yeah, it probably tournament results would probably say that too. Those would be the people that can't afford the Diabolster stuff. Fair. Con C Air. It ends with a soft J sound. Con C Air. Not Con Sarage. Con C Air. God, I don't know. They chose too hard of a name. They chose too hard of a name. They got three minutes. Remember, if you get time extended, it'll be after time is called. Yeah, but usually, if there's a time extension, they add it to the clock right here. Since it would look really bad for the stream if it just did it how it normally was in real life. And the clock started going backwards. Because so many people in chat wouldn't know what that would mean. But they get fire effects until it gets re-equipped to go ahead and search out fire dance. Now they get hit with draw and lock bird. Okay, uh, so, uh, I don't know how to say that melty, say that melty, wait, wait, I need to say it again, it's not card concierge, it's card, uh, concierge, concierge, it's so fancy, oh, activate talents, look at your hand, nice, um, it's just gonna be tear cash in the end. Most likely. Do they actually have a way to win in time here through Droll? They might not because they're hitting Nessie. Actually, they guarantee don't if you're hitting Nessie. Yeah. If you hit Nessie, that means you don't have a way to win in time. Because you would just hit Tear Cash or Scream, stop them from having any interruptions, and then play. Uh, so now we're just playing for the draw here. Wait, unless if there's not the correct amount of time left. I'm going to say it, because playing for the draw seems so 
bad, but if you don't play for the draw, then you lose. But if you draw, that pretty much is losing, right? Because you don't top if you, if you draw. Yeah, that's tough. Um, activate Fire Dance. I mean, we have to make Herald of Arc Light, Fire Dance, summon back out from the graveyard. And then pass turn. Yup. Yup, pass turn. Uh, he's a known cheater, I heard. He's not a cheater. He's not a cheater. But they redraw into Nessie after the Talons. That's wild. That is actually wild. Um, yeah, and there's 2 minutes and 30 seconds added to the clock. Showing that the time was not correct anyways. But okay, so now... They're gonna go Nessie effect. Top deck back into it. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, so they have Nessie, Tear Cash, Scream, Medora. Ooh. Don't we Herald of Arc like that? And then they have Tear Cash, Scream, Medora. They go Tear Cash, Summon by Banishing. They melt three. And then they have Medora. That's a link too that doesn't actually do anything. That's SP with no effect. I think you just have to herald. But also, maybe you don't herald. Wait, 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 wait. Maybe you don't herald though. Wait, 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 wait. Actually, go back, go back. I don't think you're supposed to herald. I lied. I think you're supposed to keep herald in hand. Yeah, I think you're supposed to keep herald in hand. Or on field. Because, uh... Everything they mill monster-wise... Would get banished. Oh, they would have milled insane. They're insane. But yeah, I was letting Nessie resolve there. Because if you keep the negate, right? It's a floodgate. It's macro. I think we need to think of it as that. I think we need to think of it as macro and not a negate in that spot. Because we could have for sure made our opponent go to battle phase to beat over that, right? Because there's no shot that they're winning this game in the next minute. Without... Going the battle phase and outing that. Or, you know, doing something that Herald can negate. You know, like make Cowboy Herald negate it, obviously. So I feel like that was done wrong. Or, or, actually, no. I respect the play by Simon He. We Herald negate that. Hope that Tear Cash mills nothing so that way the turn ends as soon as possible. So that way we get time to actually end the game and win. Okay. Okay, I can respect that thought process too. There's also not a whole lot of time here. It's a lot easier for me to think about it than for them to think about it. So, I respect that thought process. There's two different ways to do it there. Either you hold Harold or you negate Nessie. I think holding Harold would be nice, but... They didn't do it there. They didn't get to do it. It's not like... Oh, it's just game. They just lose. That sucks. Mikanko loses that one. Yup. Dump tier cash. Tier cash effect the mill. There's 45 seconds. They're going to attack for so much damage. There's no shot. They mill Rhino Scream. And then... They're going to get Scream effect... Yeah, they haven't used Scream this turn. They just banished the one from the hand. Man played so slow, so he kind of did it to himself. Uh, I mean, like, technically true. Yes, did do it to himself. I'm not saying, like, oh, no, lost a, lost a time. Oh, no, unfortunate. Um, just saying, like, oh, they lost. Unfortunate. Because obviously, you know, they... They were semi-playing for time. They were playing correctly, how you're supposed to play there. Making it to where there's like four or five minutes left for game three, and you can just full combo and win the game. Literally. Win the game without passing. FTK game three. But, then, didn't work like that. Simon ended up losing. Unfortunate. It is what it is. Um, yeah, so Simon lost that one. And then, oh, I don't think I did predictions for this one, to be honest. No, I definitely didn't. That's unfortunate. I forgot. Oh, it sucks. Okay. Simon played it very textbook, but got unlucky. Yep. Played it very normal. Nothing crazy there. 